Released on February 2nd in the year 2007, Planar Chaos was the 41st Magic the Gathering expansion for the franchise. This set was deemed as the alternate presence set that would stay in line with the overall themes established in the previous set, Time Spiral, which is why the symbol of the set is two planes overlapping with each other. Planar Chaos had 165 total cards, which included 60 commons, 55 uncommons, and 50 rares, along with 45 time-shifted cards within that 165 total. The expansion was sold in 15-card booster packs, fat packs, and was also part of four pre-constructed decks known as Endless March, Ixidora's Legacy, Ritual's Rebirth, and Unraveling Mind. There was also a novel of the same name that was released alongside the set that was written by Scott McGaw and Timothy Sanders. When it comes to the themes and mechanics of Planar Chaos, one thing that was established within the set was that the time-shifted cards present in the expansion were functional reprints of other cards from the previous sets. With the exception of their mana colors, some mechanics were even reassigned to other colors that were not part of their typical mana background in order to stay in line with the alternate reality theme for the set. For instance, the color white received Shroud, Counter, and Regeneration, green received Flying, Haste, Life Gain, and Card Draw, and red received Reach, Fear-based effects, and Pump abilities, blue received Vigilance, Card Discard, Destroy Creatures, and black received Lifelink, Control Effects, and Tapping Creatures. There was also a new mechanic introduced called Vanishing, which works similar to the Fainting mechanic from the Nemesis expansion. Vanishing uses time counters to interact with suspended cards and causes cards to be removed when the last time counter is removed. An example of this particular mechanic was the red creature Keldon Marauders. The story of this expansion continues on from the Time Spiral set. The plane of Dominaria is in complete chaos as not only the past and present phase in and out, but alternate histories start to appear as well. Teferi, who at this point has lost his Planeswalker spark, has teamed up with Joyra and Venzer to shut down the Time Rifts over the island of Shiv, with then heading towards Urborg in order to shut down more Rifts. If you would like to know more about these events, check out Coach's History of Dominaria, which goes over numerous events on the plane, or any of the videos I have made as well. Planar Chaos had a total of 13 cycles, which composed of 10 regular cycles and 3 vertical cycles. Cycles of cards included common level charms, which were cards that gave you the option to activate one or multiple effects, vanishing creatures, suspend X spells, a common cycle and an enemy color cycle of slivers, along with white bounce creatures, which had a vertical cycle of cards that returned creatures back to your hand when they entered the battlefield. There was the vertical cycle called Red Split which were cards that had two effects and included the same color. Unlike most split cards that use different colors for the different effects, this cycle included Dead and Gone at the common level, Rough and Tumble at the uncommon level, and Boom and Bust at the rare level. The other vertical cycle was called Extortion, which were a group of black cards that allowed a player to pay a steep cost in order to counter the card's powerful effect. The Extortion cycle was composed of the common instant spell Dash Hopes, the uncommon creature spell Phantasmagorian, and the rare sorcery spell called Temporal Extortion. There was the Spell Shapers, which were creatures that had the effect of an instant or sorcery card that was previously printed in another color. The Spell Shapers include the white card Ghost Tactician, having the same ability as the black card Scare Tactics, the blue card Dreamscape Artist, which had the effect of the green card Harrow, the black card Rigid Cut Ski, which had the ability of the white card Guided Strike, the red card Firefright Mage, which had the power of the black card Shriek of the Dead. And the green card Sophic Centaur had the ability of the white card Gerard's Wisdom. The next card after that was the alternate legendary creatures, which were creatures that were an alternate version of some of Magic's past characters. This includes Krovax, Ascended Hero, which was based on the Ascendant Avancar. Braids, Conjurer Adept, which was based on the previous card Braids, Cabal Minion. Miri the Cursed, which was the original card printing being Miri, Cat Warrior. Akroma Angel of Fury, with the previous printing being Akroma Angel of Wrath. And Jadit, which was based on the Legends card of the same name. After that, there was the Magi Cycle, 
a group of rare human wizards that had the same abilities as a certain powerful land that had been previously printed in the early days of magic. This was comprised of Magus of the Tabernacle, having the same ability as the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale, Magus of the Bazaar, which had the same ability as the Bazaar of Baghdad, Magus of the Coffers, which had the same ability as Cabal Coffers, Magus of the Arena, which had the same ability as the land simply called Arena, and Magus of the Library, which had the same ability as the Library of Alexandria. There was the Legendary Dragon Cycle, which were powerful dragon creatures with 6-6 six, six, and a mana activated ability if you dealt it combat damage. These dragons consisted of three colors and were a reference to the cycle of dragons that was seen in the Invasion expansion. The legendary dragons include Oros the Avenger, Intet the Dreamer, Teneb the Harvester, Numont the Devastator, and Varrosh the Hunter. The last cycle of cards were the color shifted reprints, which were cards that were functional reprints of different cards with a change to the mana color for its cost. The color shifted reprints were Malak of the Dawn, which had the ability of the blue card Ghost Ship, Privacy Charm, which was the blue version of the card Funeral Charm, Dunrider Outlaw, which is the black version of the Whirling Devrish with protection from green, also Prodigal Pyromancer, which was just the red version of Prodigal Sorcerer, along with Fadiasir, which was green's version of the card Sinbad. There were a few notable cards from this set that made a decently large impact in multiple tournament settings. The first of these cards was the card Sunlance, which was a white sorcery card that deals 3 damage to a target non-white creature. Early in its career, it was mostly successful in limited and block format, since it was a cheap form of removal. However, it did see a resurgence back in 2013 where it became part of a death and taxes for legacy format and still sees a little bit of play. Rough and Tumble was a red split card that had the effect of dealing 2 damage to each creature without flying with the other effect dealing 6 damage to all creatures with flying. When it was first printed, it was used a decent amount in limited, but it would get a much larger boost in 2012 where it was being used more in Canadian Threshold decks. It has seen a little bit more play recently in 2018 when it was being included in Delver Strategies. Akroma Angel of Fury was one of the alternate legendary cards that had multiple abilities, protections, along with not being able to be countered. It was used a good amount in decks both limited and standard, as it was part of the Mana Ramp and Dragonstorm decks, but it saw a significant drop in play after 2017 just like Detretivore. The most recent play this card has seen was one deck in 2018 where it was part of a green-white hate bears for the modern format, and was used in conjunction with Aether Vial, since this particular deck had no red lands. Another red card that was noteworthy in this set was Kelden Marauders. This was a creature with Vanishing 2 and when it entered or left the battlefield, it dealt 1 damage to target player. This was seen in mono red and burn strategies in multiple formats such as standard, limited, and extended. It would also be later seen in dual commander decks as it was seen a good amount in the Zergo Bell Striker decks. Harmonize was a green sorcery card with the effect of drawing 3 cards. This card was overall efficient with card advantage and was seen in numerous mana ramp strategies in 2007. Just like a few other cards that were mentioned, there would be a big drop off after the year 2007, but Harmonize would see a small boost in 2012 and is a go-to card for the commander format. There was the card Manatithe, which was the color shifted version of the blue card Force Spike that lets you counter a spell unless your opponent pays one generic mana. It saw very little play when it was first printed as it was only used in limited block formats. At around 2011, however, when the modern format was added to the official format list, Manatithe saw a small bump in play. It now sees a good amount of playability in the commander format, as it's another cheap, soft counterspell. Sulfur Elemental was a red creature with flash and split second that gave white creatures plus one plus one and saw very few play in its early days in the standard format, but it started to be played much more after the year 2011, when it was being included in eternal format strategies like Vintage and Legacy. Sulfur Elemental was in all seen in decks such as Twin Storm, Delver, and Miracles. It was most recently seen in 2018 where it was part of a Canadian threshold for the Legacy Pro Tour 25th event. There was the card Seal of Primordium, 
which was a green card that can destroy a target artifact or enchantment after it becomes sacrificed. This card was used widely in the beginning of the card's printing, and due to the card's simplicity and cheap mana cost, it still gets used in other formats. This card is most popular in Modern, and it has been part of deck's strategies such as Lantern Control, Boggles, Jund, and even Bloom Titan. Alongside that, it also sees a lot of inclusion in Commander decks, where it is effective against many artifacts that are used in the format. Simeon Spirit Guide was a red creature card that had the ability to be exiled from the hand in order to get one red mana. This was mostly used to get bigger spells in earlier turns than what was expected. Overall, it is mostly seen in Eternal formats, as the card is used in many combo strategies, or is just used to cheat in other big creatures. Simeon Spirit Guide over the years has been included in decks such as Belcher, Living End, Ad Nauseum, and Eldrazi Aggro, just to name a few. After that was the card Extirpate, which was a black card with the split second mechanic with the ability to exile cards of the same name from a graveyard hand and deck. This was a good card to remove specific problem cards used in player matches and has been seen in a diverse amount of decks. Extirpate was used heavily from 2007 up until about 2011, but it has since seen a large drop off and was seen in a successful professional deck twice between 2012 and now. Damnation was a black sorcery card that was the color shifted version of the widely popular Wrath of God that has been present since the early days of Magic the Gathering. This was able to destroy all creatures on the battlefield along with creatures not being able to be regenerated. It is usually a must include with anything that runs black since it's a cheaper, effective board wipe, but it's also used in Commander to basically get a second Wrath of God. Aeon Chronicler was a blue suspend creature spell that had power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand and was also used as an unstoppable card advantage machine since every time a time counter was taken off, you were able to draw a card. Many players had a hard time dealing with this card in the first year of its printing due to the power drawing mechanics, but past 2007, Aeon Chronicler has not seen play in any professional decks. It gets used every so often in Commander and did get a recent reprinting in Commander 2016, but overall there are much better, more efficient options overall. The last notable card was Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, which was a legendary land that made other land cards become swamps on top of the lands type. This was a powerful land card that was able to help with mana fixing, which was very effective in multicolor strategies. While it was overall effective when it wasn't standard, it has seen massive tournament play in Modern, Extended, and Legacy, and has been a part of strategies such as Abzan Midrange, Esper Control, Demir, Eldrazi Aggro, and Dark Depths. It has also seen significant play in Commander as well, where there are lots of strategies include 3, 4, and 5 color strats. As of the recording of this video, a sealed booster box of this expansion is worth around $450. So that is all you need to know about the Planar Chaos set. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and a comment. Also, with sharing this episode, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Magic the Gathering videos such as the Thran unofficial audiobook and a History of Dominaria, which goes over all the events on the plane itself. If you would also like to support the channel more, please go check out Coach's Patreon page and become a Patreon today along with checking out the different tiers and rewards. If you missed last week's episode over Time Spiral, please be sure to look at that episode after this video. Hello everyone! My name is Trapixium, thank you all so much for watching, and thank you to Coach for allowing me to narrate this episode. I also have a YouTube channel. If you enjoy the lore for magic, well then you're in luck, because that's basically all I talk about. Do feel free to go over there and check out some of my videos on topics ranging from why Vorthos matters, is to more stories around Urza and Yogmoth. If any of that tickles your fancy, well, I'm pretty sure Coach has the link somewhere around here, so just just go check out the channel. It'll, it'll be great.